Peterson. Welcome to Vehicle Vault Auto Museum, Event Center, and Garage Condos. So excited to share our car community with you. Come on in. Welcome in. Now we're inside here at Vehicle Vault Auto Museum in Parker, Colorado. I want to share a little bit of our collection with you. We actually begin with our 1906 Success Auto Buggy. This obviously was something where the Success Company produced regular horse-drawn buggies prior. This was their foray into the auto buggy world. Um, it has this tiny little engine on the side. They actually said that it was so simple that even a child could drive it. I don't think that's recommended. We have our 1907 Cadillac Model M Touring. It is a Victorian right-hand drive, which is pretty special. Here, we have our 1913 Fiat. This was known as a gentleman's racer at the time. It's pretty special with that spyglass windshield and leather doors. Right here, I am so happy to share with you our pair of 1914 Mercedes. These are a pretty incredible, one-of-a-kind pair. This original open body was ordered by the mayor of Ulm, Germany, and afterwards he sent it back to Mercedes and they created this custom town car coachwork that you see here. Here we have our 1925 of Lincoln. This is a Model L touring car with the dual cowl. Of course, what museum is complete without a Model T? Obviously, we would not be where we are today with automobile progressions without the Model T starting really the mass production ease. Here's our 1931 Ford AA Tanker. This is pretty incredible being reproduced in that Texaco design. And I will share with you another piece in just a little bit about why that is important to us. This is our REO Speedwagon, it's a house car. So this REO Speedwagon began its life as a truck. In the 30s, it was converted to this house car that you see here. A husband and wife team drove it around the country and sold QB dolls at carnivals and lived out of it. Um, whenever we found it, it was almost like a time capsule from the 30s and 40s with magazines and clothing. It's one of our favorite pieces because of the history. Here we have our 1934 Packard, one of those really incredible American brands that we have unfortunately lost to time. This is our 37 Cord. It's a really incredible, unique piece. Here's our 1935 Hudson, another iconic American brand. And I do want to share with you over here our 1960 Bentley S2. Obviously, really incredible for its time. It was truly in 1959 that the original owner delayed delivery on to have it titled as a 1960 instead. This is our Packard Caribbean. It's a 1953. Um, I usually refer to this as our land yacht, and you can see why. It's pretty much longer than most things you find on the road these days. Over here, we have our 1955 Studebaker President Speedster. This one is finished in a really unique piece called Lemon and Lime. Each of the colors had their own names as well, but for marketing purposes, Studebaker called this Lemon and Lime. This right here is our Texaco Cracker Jack Station. This is something that back in the day you could order from a catalog and then they would actually deliver it by rail. You could set it up, set a gas pump outside and you're in business by that afternoon. I feel that this is so important to our history as cars have played in um, because the ability to do gas stations like this and bring them further and further out allowed for more and wider range in automobile travel as well. Obviously, we must have the really iconic 1957 Ford Thunderbird. This is an E-Code bird. 
Um, so an incredible piece of American history with this as well. Right over here is our 1954 Kaiser Darren. Kaiser was incredible with the production of the Darren because it actually was one of the first fiberglass bodies um, in a sports car, in an American sports car. It actually beat the Corvette out into production. It's one of the only cars, if not the only, with these sliding pocket doors. It also has a three position top. And really incredible Art Deco fan-shaped grill. Here we have our 1964 Carmen Ghia. Um, this one has been jazzed up just a little bit. It's an important piece to our collection because it pays homage to how kind of our passion got started. Uh, my father's first car ever was a 64 Carmen Ghia, so this is definitely a throwback to his history. This is our 1954 XK120. Um, once again, really incredible piece of automotive history. This was named as a 120 because that was the top speed it could go. This is the crown jewel of our collection. It is our 1954 Mercedes Gullwing 300 SL. This is the lowest known mileage going in existence. We are not sure that there's not something lower out there, but as far as what we have been told and been able to research, this is it. It has fewer than 4,500 miles on it. Um, it was originally purchased by a Mercedes dealer in California who put it in his showroom. Um, he did repaint it cream, but other than being brought back to the original silver color, it is all original. This is our 1948 Lincoln. Obviously an incredible piece of post-war design. And behind that, we have our 49 Hudson Commodore. Um, Hudson actually kind of changed the game with the design in that because they lowered down the actual seating area. So it was a step into design that lowered the center of gravity as well. This is our 1958 Dodge military truck. Um, it has been restored and it really harkens back to kind of what these trucks have done for America and the military. This is our DeSoto Fireflight. This is a pure original survivor car. So everything that you see on this is just as it was originally in 1955, including this really iconic coral and black paint. This right here is our 1965 Lincoln Continental. Um, I personally loved and was thrilled to find a Continental that was not black. And so it is a unique finish with this color and then the tuxedo interior as well, which is black and white. This is our 1963 split window coupe, a very iconic piece of American history on this. Obviously that design in the back has that pillar coming down in the glass. That limited visibility and so not a ton were produced and some actually had that pillar removed. Some owners had that pillar removed and replaced with solid glass to increase the visibility of that piece. Obviously, what collection would be complete without a Shelby? So this is our 68 Shelby GT500. Um, we obviously love Carol and everything he did for the automotive industry and for bringing different things to the market. Um, a GT500 is absolutely incredible. This is our Superbird, one of my favorites in our collection. So Plymouth actually was trying to lure Richard Petty back to race for them. Um, and so they let him design his own car or work with their designers. This was the product of that. And you can see that that giant wing on the back obviously helps with downforce. But my favorite part is they were required to have a bumper this small little rubber lip right here counted as the bumper. So if you're ever curious about a bumper on a Superbird, it's that tiny piece of rubber. This is our 1970 Pontiac GTO Judge. It is one of the most highly optioned uh, muscle cars that we have come across. So in addition to factory air, it of course has its eight track player. You've got your hood tachometer. It's really like a time capsule for the 70s as well. And then we obviously have to admire what the GTO did for muscle cars as a whole, and really it kind of being the birth of a new genre there. Here is our 1967 Mustang Eleanor Tribute. Obviously really iconic from the movie. 
and an incredible piece of history as well. I would say that this is one of the most recognizable cars of the collection and people tend to absolutely love it. Over here is our 1987 Buick Grand National. So really our goal in collecting and in starting this museum was to make sure that we showed the progression of design and then you know mechanical progression as well. Um, and in doing so, we wanted to have pretty much every decade represented and trying to think of what was iconic in the 80s was fun. The Grand National definitely fits the bill. Quite a sleeper for Buick back then, um, based on the Regal, but obviously very, very incredible with what it was producing. This is our 1978 Corvette. This is a special pace car edition that was never dealer prepped. Um, it actually has its original window sticker and the plastic on the seats and the steering wheel. Whenever we came across it, it had 17 miles on it. There's nothing in the collection we won't drive. So it does have 19 miles now, but we kept it super low. This is our 1981 DeLorean. Obviously, it was you know, designed and built by John DeLorean, who is often referred to as the grandfather of muscle, seeing as how he designed the original GTOs. Um, obviously, DeLorean did not last for very long, but it was still a cutting edge car for its time and of what it produced. We are also so fortunate right now, we have a special exhibit here in the museum. Um, we have an incredible group of supporters, and so every year we do our exhibit called Venture Into the Vault, where our fans and friends can submit their own cars to be part of this exhibit. And then those cars are voted on by the public. Um, we partner with Haggerty for this, and they are incredible friends and helps and sponsors in this whole exhibit. So we actually have our Venture cars in right now. We have the 1991 Cyclone. We have a 1994 Toyota Supra. This is something that you're probably not going to see that often. This is a 1961 Morris Minor. And here we have a 2000 Honda S2000. And then right down here, we have a 1965 Ford Thunderbird. So as I said, these were voted on by our audience, by people's friends and family members. And those are the ones that made it here into the exhibit. And we can't wait for next year as well. Um, right over here, we have our 1933 Tomcat. It was built to mimic a 1933 Stutz, but it is definitely its own car. Um, the gentleman who built it had a plan to actually do kit cars out of it, but he only ever produced two. So this is one of two, and it's really an incredible piece. The entire undercarriage is painted as well in the same color, so it is stunning on mirrors. Here's our 1951 Mercury Custom. This actually was a Boyd Coddington build. It was designed by Chip Foose's father, Sam, and they teamed up together to create this. Here is our 1960 Cadillac Coupe de Ville Custom as well. Uh, we call her Lola. She is fun. She obviously is very unique and not as you would have seen her in 1960. Um, but has a really incredible interior that matches as well. Right over here is our 1967 Jaguar E-Type. Obviously one of those really incredible design pieces. Um, Enzo Ferrari actually called it the most beautiful car ever built. And here is our 1962 Corvette Custom. This actually has a 1967 Stingray hood and it is built um, actually has a tube chassis and all of those things. It's atomic orange. This is the car that actually kind of gave our logo life. It inspired the copper in our logo. Um, and it's an incredible build and a fun piece. Hey, I'm Lance. Hey, now that you've had the chance to check out the vehicle vault, you can come take a look at our custom garages and see what people are doing here in our community with our luxury custom garage condos. Come on, take a look inside. So inside, this is what we call a gray shell delivery. And you can take a look around and see how we're delivering the product. Uh, each condo is different in size. We have three different buildings here, multiple units to choose from. And as you can see behind me, we have a utility channel but we have all of our stub out so that people can come in here and really customize and build out these units. We've got folks that are putting in mezzanine levels, kitchenettes, offices, Murphy beds, you name it, leaving room down low 
to work on their vehicles. Uh, this is really a, a design for motor enthusiasts, folks that are passionate about working on their vehicles, um, customizing their, their, their dwelling here, so to speak, or their, their condo in any fashion that they see fit. Thanks for letting me show you the space today. You know, I hope you uh, have enjoyed a little bit about it as much as we do here. And we'd love to see you come out and, and take a look around and, and tour it. Thank you so much for joining me here at Vehicle Vault Auto Museum, Event Center, and Garage Condos. Thank you to the Peterson for joining us as well. We loved having you. Please feel free to come visit us anytime, or you can also find us at vehiclevaultco.com. Have a great day.